Hey guys, my name is Emma and today I'm talking to you about some of my favourite books to reread. So a few days ago I posted the first in this three part that I'm doing on this channel, um, talking about the act of rereading. So I did a discussion piece as my first one and I'll link that down below, but now I'm just going to talk about some of my favourite books to reread that have been firm favourites over the past kind of decade or so. Some of the books on this list are personal favourites of mine. Some of them I wouldn't ever really list in a favourites video, but are ones that I come back to time and time again for whatever reason. Um, I think the rereadability of a book does not necessarily always mean that it's going to end up being a favourite book. Uh, I've broken these into two piles as well. One pile is the list of books that I reread uh, from start to finish the whole way through consistently. The other ones are ones that I tend to dip in and reread certain favourite sections but don't necessarily actually reread the whole thing. Um, which again is something I kind of didn't really touch on in the discussion piece but the idea of you know do you reread literally all of it or do you just like to reread your favourite scenes and I've got kind of a mix today of the two. But we're going to start with the books that I like to reread the whole of them. So the first book is actually a series of books and that's His Dark Materials by Philip Pullman. Um, this is a trilogy, you probably know it, they're actually all in reverse order here. Let's try and sort this out. There we go, you've got Northern Lights, His Subtle Knife and The Amber Spyglass. The Northern Lights you might know as The Golden Compass if you're an American viewer. Uh, they changed the name for you guys, no idea why. Um, so this is the story of Lyra Balakwa who lives in a parallel universe Oxford where your personality traits or some of your personality traits are physically manifested in the form of a demon who has an animal shape and children's ones can change shapes and adults ones are fixed and then it's basically Lyra's journey and it's a fantastical world she goes off and meets some iron bears and there's moving to parallel universes she meets some witches there's there's a knife that has magical abilities later on there's stuff to do with religion and theology it's just a wonderful series and one that i feel like every time i revisit i get more and more from it because there's so many layers to this when i was younger and i first read this probably when i was about 12 maybe even younger maybe even 10 but when i first read this it was just sort of a a childhood romp it was a classic adventure tale with talking animals and witches but then with each subsequent reread you're getting more of the theological discourse that's behind it and you know philip pullman explores some really interesting and in-depth ideas in all of these books these are the original editions that i have and i read these on holiday in turkey um, and i know that because the glue i don't know if i can show you particularly easily <laughs> see Ooh. yeah you lose sections of these books. The sun ruined the glue for these books and they're just falling apart but I am loath to get rid of them and get new editions because every time I reread these which is a challenge with these I once reread this in the bath that was that was Russian roulette that was a bit of a gamble um, but every time I pick these up it reminds me of that holiday and the first time that I read them. Another book I read on that exact same holiday because it suffers the exact same problem is Spindle's End by Robin McKinley. Uh, this is a retelling of Sleeping Beauty but with so much more detail and richness that it's almost unrecognisable as the original tale. Uh, it tells the story of Rosie who um, lives a very normal life in this fantasy world where magic is a thing but it's not really something that we we look at too much. Your, your friendly local witch is more likely to give you sort of a couple of spells to sort out the errant gnomes in your garden rather than turn you into a frog and she just has it's sort of spanning her development from child all the way up to um, young adult but she doesn't know that she's actually the cursed princess of this land that has been missing. It's just a wonderful wonderful story and there's so many brilliant characters and what I really love about it is you get to see all of the characters develop as the time progresses. I think Robin McKinley does a really brilliant job of taking some of the secondary characters like her um, aunt and her cousin and just sort of as in her fake aunt and cousin, the witches who look after her, not the queen. And just sort of the character development that they go through as well and the, the cast of characters surrounding the main um, protagonists of this story I think are brilliant and if anything their character development is stronger than Rosie's and I think that that's really lovely to see because sometimes secondary and tertiary characters can get forgotten because the story isn't really about them. The magic system's lovely as well, it's just a really wonderful tale. A book that I really wouldn't consider a favourite but it's one that I find myself coming back to time and time again is uh, The Four Temperaments by is it Yonam McDonoghue? Didn't actually check that before saying that. 
films. This is a story about a ballerina or a ballet dancer um, and her journey to, I think it's New York City, to join the main kind of ballet um, troupe there. Um, she then ends up having an affair with one of the musicians who has a wife and kids and all that jazz. And it's just really the interactions of her with that family and the sort of ripple effects of introducing a new human being into a pre-existing network of relationships can have. The discussions about dance are lovely in this, the discussions about the different kinds of love you can have for people, whether it be romantic or more lust driven or familial or anything like that are, are very very interesting and I think it's a wonderful character study. It's probably one of the few character driven books that I actually enjoy because I'm much more of a plot driven kind of gal. And then the final book that I like to read from start to finish is one of my favourite rereads is Gods Behaving Badly by Marie Phillips. This takes your classic Greek gods and then dumps them in a modern day setting. It's so much fun. It's so entertaining. Uh, Aphrodite like works as a sex cooler, you know one of the the voices at the end of the line. Um, who else do we've got? Uh, Dionysius runs like a club and is a DJ. Um, it's just all absurd and wonderful and insane. Um, and basically the main plot to this is that they are losing their power for some reason and they don't know why and like Zeus has basically gone insane and it's just like the senile old granddad locked up in the, in the attic which is a bit worrying. And then Apollo decides to show off and turns off the sun and in doing so um, he can't like falls into a coma and he can't turn it back on and then basically it's about them trying to find out why and fix that with the help of a few mortals along the way. It's brilliant, it's amazing, you do need to know a little bit of Greek mythology to enjoy this but if you do like again any of those um, mythological retellings I think you'll really like this one. I do just want to do a little bit of an honourable mentions to a few books that really could have been on this list as well but I wanted to narrow it down and maybe introduce you to some books that I haven't mentioned this channel before. It goes without saying somebody of my generation, the Harry Potter books are clearly on this list. I have no idea how many times I've reread them. I know the third one I've read at least 15 times in my life if not more. I reread them quite recently like this time last year and really enjoyed them but I definitely read them over and over and over again as a child so they deserve a mention. Station Eleven I think I can't go any more than about four videos without bringing this book up and I did mention it in my why I like to reread kind of discussion piece so that one is a classic that I reread probably once every year to six months I worked out in that video um, and then the final book I want to give a kind of honourable mention shout out to is Enid Blyton's Shadow the Sheepdog which is one of the first books I ever really um, kind of considered to be a favourite book uh, and I got my dad to read it to me over and over and over again as a child. So it's not one that I've personally read lots, but I've had read to me lots. It's a wonderful story. Lovely, lovely. I think like the sheepdog version of Black Beauty. One that I rarely read all the way through, but I do love to reread from time to time, is The Gargoyle by Andrew Davidson. I mentioned this in my August wrap up because I did reread it from start to finish, which was quite noteworthy for me. But generally, what I tend to do is read the first half to two thirds and then put it down is sort of how my rereading for this tends to go. This is the story of an unnamed narrator who suffers a horrendous um, accident in the very opening chapter and suffers really severe burns all over his body. Now he wasn't a very nice human being before the burns and the idea is that these are a bit of a um a literal trial by fire to try and make him into a better person and whilst in the hospital he meets uh, Marianne who is a woman who claims that they know each other through past lives and that they are soulmates and then it's just their story and there's a lot of other stories woven into it of their past lives. It's wonderful, I love the imagery in this but I definitely find it more interesting when he's in the hospital and his early interactions with Marianne and when she's telling the stories whereas the later half of the book gets a little bit trippy in places and without that hospital setting I feel like it loses the rhythm somewhat and one of the things that I found so interesting about this book is the amount of detail that they go into about the burns treatments which once he's out of the hospital you get a lot less of that. The next book I'm going to talk about is The Time Traveller's Wife by Audrey Niffinger. This copy is so battered because it got damaged in a flood a couple of years ago. It's all like worn. I really need to buy some new copies of some of these books. I adore this book so much. It's my favourite romance book ever of all time. It's wonderful. Well, tied. Tied with Ian McEwan's Atonement. But yeah, anyway, it's wonderful, it's lovely, and I've reread it 
time and time and time again but because i've reread it so many times i now actually find that i don't need to reread the whole thing and what i tend to do is again read the first half a lot more when they're first introduced in the relationship between claire and henry and then later once they kind of settle down into uh, domestic mm, not quite bliss and there's some more emotional things going on i find it difficult to connect with that in the same way so i don't read as much but there are some really iconic scenes in the time traveler's wife with henry discussing um, like Henry having interactions with either his future selves or his past selves that I absolutely love. There are a few other characters that he has interactions with that I absolutely love and what I will do is I will kind of jump through to find those in particular and not necessarily read the whole thing. Um, it does lend itself to being jumped around quite nicely as well. And then the final book I'm going to talk about in this video is an absolute beast of a one and that's The Thirteen and a Half Lives of Captain Blue Bear, a novel by Walter Mowers. I talked about this a while ago in my um, Get Ready With Up book tag. This is a brilliant book. It's huge. It is about the fantastical world of Zamonia, specifically looking at uh, our main character Blue Bear and his Thirteen and a Half Lives. So as the name suggests it's almost like a collection of short stories or novellas about different parts of this world that he finds himself in um, with some recurring characters as they go. So at one point he makes friends with some waves as in the waves in the ocean and they teach him how to speak and how to um, do all the different versions of speaking that you can imagine whether it be kind of grandiose speeches to, to sobbing apologies to the works um, he joins a school which is taught by a uh, creature with seven brains he falls through wormholes at one point the lost city of Atlantis appears and it details all the different jobs that he has whilst he's in Atlantis which is just it's such a wonderfully diverse and extensive world it really does remind me of something like terry pratchett's worlds or anything like that um and it's just brilliant but i definitely have favorite lives of his and i find that i tend not to bother to read the whole way through so i quite often skip the first life because that's a lot of setup for the world which once you've done that once you don't really need it anymore there are some middling lives that i'm really not bothered by um and then there's definitely some towards the end that i'm not bothered by i probably have kind of five or six lives of his that i think are absolutely brilliant not that the others aren't amazing, but you know, I've got favourites, I've got ones that resonated more with me, and those will be the ones that I go back and read, because it's huge. And I really don't feel like I need to reread it again and again, the whole thing. Um, I've not read any more of Walter Moers, and he has a whole series set in Zamonia, so I think I need to make it a priority in 2019 to pick up some more of his books and try Zamonia 2 and 3 and kind of continue, because like Terry Pratchett, I think it's gonna be where there's those um, continuing sort of reoccurring characters that pop up um, but you still get more and more of the world. So those are some of my favourite books to reread. Uh, do you have some favourites? Do you have one or two that you love to come back to? Does the idea of rereading kind of turn you off completely? You go why would you waste valuable reading time to reread a book when there's new ones out there? Because I do get what you mean. I do feel guilty when I reread sometimes. Um, and tune in soon because I'm going to cover some of the books that I want to reread in the future that I've read recently and only currently read once. Um, so yeah, that was pretty much it for me. Have a wonderful day, happy reading, all that jazz, and I'll chat to you soon. Bye!